I'm not much of a baker. Actually, I don't like baking because it's too precise for me. It's too measured. It's too perfect. I mean, I am perfect in many ways, but baking is something that I am not the strongest person. But I want to try something. I want to make a traditional Portuguese dessert, because I'm Portuguese, uh, pastel nata, which pretty much is like the signature dessert of the Portuguese. It is these little delicious custard cups that is baked in a crispy shell. It's all about the crunch of the shell and the moist, still like nice, soft custard inside. Um, and it's a challenging thing because you have to like make this dough with layered butter and keep it super flaky. Um, I have never tried these. They are one of my favorite things to eat. We're going to give it a whirl. Um, let me show you what I laid out. All of our prep is laid out because you know me, it's all in the prep for our attempt at making pastel natas. And it's a Portuguese custard dessert like we talked about. I broke it down. Here's the ingredients for our dough. Here's the ingredients for our custard. And here's the ingredients for our simple syrup that has to go in the custard. And then we have some flour for dusting or rolling pen. Let's get this started. First thing we're gonna start with, the dough. Um, dough, it's pretty much very similar to our dumpling dough. I mean, this is gonna be a sticky dough to work with. And uh, all the recipes, all the videos I watched, I tried to do my homework on it, sat down and really like pulled a bunch of different stuff together. Um, everyone says the same thing, sticky dough. So. One cup of AP flour, I'm adding in one teaspoon of salt, and I'm going to mix with a wooden spoon in quarter cup of water until the dough pulls away from the bowl. Come on, as we said, do it in a, a mixer, but I liked the ones that had the old school um, wooden spoons. So we're just starting to mix the dough, adding the water in until it starts to pull away from the edges. So just so you can start to see. Um, once we get this dough going, we're gonna get it on the counter and really work it for just a couple minutes but then let it rest. So as you can see, the dough is now pulling away from the bowl and what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna heavily flour my surface that we're gonna work with and we're gonna put our sticky dough out on here. We're gonna work it for just a couple minutes. Uh, we don't wanna overwork it because we want this to stay sticky, just to kind of come together a little bit before we rest it. Make sure you dust your hands so that the dough doesn't stick to you, just using our palms and kneading it just a little bit so that it comes together. It is sticky, so keep adding the flour. And I'm just using two fingers and pushing it over as I need a little bit more flour. Sticky dough, sticky dough. Um, once I can get it into a nice little ball, I'm gonna let this sit on the counter, floured, right here. Just like I saw in one video, <coughs> with the bowl over it. Alexa, set a timer for 20 minutes. We're gonna let this rest while we make the simple syrup so we can make our custard. So a little bit different than making like a creme brulee or a custard where you would whip your egg yolks with um, the sugar, we're gonna make a simple syrup to fold into our custard that we're gonna make. And our custard's gonna have flour. So I'm doing a quarter cup of water to three quarter cup of um, sugar, just pouring the water. And I zested one whole lemon with my peeler and I'm gonna add that in here. Now when you zest a lemon, wash it under warm water so you get any of that wax or like um, pesticides off and then peel it. I'm gonna go on low heat for this and gonna give it one stir and that's it until it gets, um, until all the sugar dissolves into it and it just starts to bubble a little bit so we can let it cool to fold into our custard. Okay, just so you can see all of our, Oh, that smells amazing because of the lemon zest in here, which the re some recipes have it, some don't. I liked it. I thought it would add like a note of freshness to the custard cakes. 
Um, but all the sugar is dissolved, so now I'm gonna put it on the side so it just cools a little bit because we don't wanna add this to our custard pot because we'll scramble our eggs. And we are here to make a creamy, creamy, delicious custard. So we have our simple syrup going. I also wanna just show you our butter. The recipe calls for eight ounces of unsalted butter that is soft enough to be almost, I want to consider the uh, consistency um, like icing for a cake. So I have left it out at room temp and it's going to be very, very spreadable because this is what's going to go in between our layers of dough to get it to be that crispy, fluffy dough. The dough itself is flour, salt, and water. This is where all the flavor is right here. It's been 20 minutes. Do not be scared to fly your dough. It's going to be sticky dough. So we're going to take some flour, put it on top. I'm going to get some flour on my hands and we're just going to flatten it out. The goal here is to make a square, a square, probably an eighth of an inch thin, thick, thin, thick or thin. I don't know. Um, if it starts to stick, add flour. Um, rolling pin just to kind of help flouring that. I'm gonna get this. Um, I like to get it wide, then turn. If you need to pull it with your hand a little bit, go ahead, feel free. This does have some good elasticity in it, so don't worry about that. Um, I'm just gonna constantly keep turning it and rolling it out. There we go. And kind of see how it's coming together. Um, the square is just because what we're going to do is put the butter on two thirds of it and fold it over. So we're going to build layers. In essence, you could do this with puff pastry, but I was going to be an overrude cheater today and want to see if I can do this on my own, make it and see the difference. Okay. So pretty much almost there on the thickness wise, trying to get it just a little bit more square with it. And if you take a look, all set. So our butter has to be soft enough and pliable. You're gonna put butter on your dough. Um, you can use an offset spat or whatever, and you are going to spread your butter out like this. Take around a third of that butter, spreading it evenly through the dough. And we're gonna do almost two thirds. I almost like draw a line with the butter down and go across like this. Because what's gonna happen is, and you wanna use a little pressure on this so that it becomes even. Leave around a quarter of an inch to the edge because we're gonna fold it over. Two thirds is done. So now we wanna fold this over. Try not to get too many air bubbles. And you wanna fold the other piece over. So try and match it up so that there's no openings. Flower! And we're gonna roll this out. We're gonna turn it. Flower the other side. And we're gonna start again. We're gonna roll this out to be around an eighth of an inch thin. So, ooh, the butter, I feel it popping. Okay. Okay, so we got it nice and flat again. Where's my butter? I'm gonna do it again. Two thirds, draw your line down, push your butter out. This is why it's really important that it's pliable. Try to stay around a quarter of an inch away from the edge and get it all smeared in there. It's kind of like Groundhog's Day, you're doing it all over again. So we're gonna fold the one side in, two thirds of the way, the side that's empty, two thirds of the way. And we're gonna try and match up the ends. It's a little short on this side, so I'm just gonna pull it. Um, just using this bench scraper to kind of clean off a little bit of the old flour and any butter that might have got over there. And now I'm gonna flour this. I'm going to put this on a piece of parchment and I'm gonna pop it in the fridge for around 10 minutes. 
The reason I'm doing that is I don't want the butter to get too hard, but right now the dough is super soft because of the butter and I need it to firm up a little bit so we get that last really good roll because we only have one more roll before we fold it all together. So we just pulled this out of the fridge. Um, it was in there for like 10 minutes, but now you see just firmed up a little bit. So, roll it back out, eighth of an inch. Even pressure, pushing it through. If you need to turn it, lift and turn. Oh yeah, what a difference it made going in the fridge just for a couple minutes. Um, because the first round, actually next time I do this, I might do it between both times. Um, the butter's really soft and the dough's warm from resting. So you need it to firm up a little bit. So now, getting this as big and as beautiful as we can. Oh, okay, perfect. Don't, don't be scared to pull with your hands. Um, the last third of the butter is gonna go we're gonna go everywhere with it. Everywhere with it. And we are going to roll this like a burrito. Look at this. Look at my dough. I love it. For the non baker, come on, people. For the non baker, who is excited to see this? I am. Our dough is ready. Super smooth. The rest of our butter. And that's why I love this thing. There's not one drop left behind. Okay, evenly throughout the whole entire thing. I want you to leave this much on the top with no butter. I'm gonna explain why. Because we're gonna roll this, and when we go to roll this, what's gonna happen is I need to seal it. So we're just gonna use a little bit of water and we'll seal it right up. So I'm just pulling, I'm gonna spread my butter. Spread my butter, butter makes everything better. Wetting my hands, I'm gonna go on the edge here. Let me get a little bit of water. Where I didn't put the butter. And I'm gonna start from the opposite side and we're gonna roll this. And you're gonna roll it tight. You're gonna roll it all the way across. Once it gets going, it gets going. Try to get no holes. Oh yeah, pulling it. Can we flour your hands just to help push it through? Here we go. Now we're right here. I'm going to wet it again. <laughs> Wetting the base. I don't want my hands to be sticky. I'm gonna roll it closed. And add this flour here. Gonna make it nice. We're going to back on our sheet pan. So we're gonna take that wax paper that we had on the first on the tray the first time. We're gonna lay this here. Gonna wrap it. We're gonna roll it, put it on our sheet pan, and we're gonna let it rest till tomorrow overnight. I mean there's still stuff to do. The dough's gonna rest till tomorrow, but we gotta make the custard, right? So I'm just using the bench scraper to get all the flour off my table. I'm gonna save it in a bowl because tomorrow we're gonna need to flour our surface when we decide to put the cups together. But let's get that filling done. Alrighty. Little non-traditional kind of custard I guess I'm used to making. So we're gonna add, it's a third cup of flour, I just use AP flour, and salt. And a tea, I'm sorry, a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. And mi leche. We're gonna add that in, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna go over to the stove, we're gonna whisk this, and we are going to get it nice and thick um, before we add our simple syrup, our egg yolks, and our vanilla. So using a whisk, doing this over medium heat, um, the flour, in base, in theory, it's like making a roux. It's gonna cook and thicken up the milk. Then we're gonna let that cool, and we're gonna add our eggs in, our vanilla, and the simple syrup. 
and then we will strain all of it. So don't worry about the lemon rinds, don't worry if there's a clump in your flour. We'll strain it all before we pour that into our little cups that we're gonna make. It sometimes takes a couple minutes, so feel free to have a glass of wine and whisk consistently like this so you don't burn your milk and you don't get clumps. So it's pretty, it's a good pastime in my opinion. Okay, I wanna show you. It is so thick right now. So, um, the cinnamon, see I saw some recipes that had cinnamon sticks in the simple syrup, and then I saw some that ask you to put like a teaspoon of syrup, um, cinnamon into your milk mix. I thought about the cinnamon stick, but I really, really, really love cinnamon, and I think it's gonna make such a difference. Shut this off real quick. So you can see, super thick, really thick and beautiful, it smells so good. So, I'm gonna take this off the heat and I'm gonna keep whisking it to cool it down and we're gonna get the other stuff together. Our flour and milk is cold. We're gonna add in one teaspoon of vanilla. Hold on. My fridge is open. Now, these are six egg yolks. We're gonna add those in and whisk the living crap out of them. And after that's all whisked together, we're gonna add our simple syrup. Even with the lemon rinds, don't worry about it. Scoop everything in, because this is all gonna get strained at the end of the day. So, gonna get this whisked together, and this is gonna be our beautiful custard. Use the spatula, um, the whisk, and scrape the corners so that everything comes together. Just wanna let you know, I tweaked my recipe a little bit. I added two more egg yolks, so six, seven, eight. So we're gonna go with eight, only for two reasons. One, um, it wasn't the color that I wanted to be for a custard cup that I know, and it was really thick. I think I cooked the flour just a little bit too much, so I wanna kinda take it back a little bit, um, and so I added two egg yolks. And now, what we're gonna do, While the prep's important, everything's ready. Strainer, and I'm using a spouted measuring cup because once my cups are formed, we're gonna pour it in. And now you don't have to worry about the rinds because it's all getting strained. Let it go through and you're gonna have a beautiful custard. Take the spatula, push down, and get every single drop. Don't worry if it's cakey in here, that's not gonna make it through. So if you kind of scoop and move and push down, you'll end up with every single drop into here. And look at that beautiful custard that now we have to fill once we mold our pastry cups. Who is excited? I'm excited. And we're back. I made the dough last night so that we can do it all at once for you. Okay. Um, taking the dough out of the plastic wrap and floured surface. Look how pretty! Okay, just so you guys can see, we're gonna do this in a muffin tin and I sprayed everything here. We are going to score this. You just roll it kind of out for a minute. Want to clip off the not so sturdy ends. Do not throw them out in case we need any patchwork. Okay. So we want to make 12 pieces because we have 12 um, dish, uh, twelve muffin cups. So it's six on each side right here. All right, I figured it out and I cut them. So you're gonna take your piece and you're gonna put it into your sprayed pan. So you guys can see this one would be the best. Thumbs down in the middle. Start pushing. Start pushing and working your way around. Just so you can kind of see what we're doing is we're molding a cup. It's gonna feel like it's not gonna work. It's gonna work. You're gonna slowly pull the dough and you wanna go thin. You wanna push all the way around. 
and you're building a cup, you also want to come around an eighth of an inch outside of the pan. Using thumb, pushing, and being thin. Once you get this going, you will have your little cup and come up around the ring. Step, repeat. All right, I'm still at it. We're on custard cup number three. And do you see what I'm doing? I'm folding the lip over. We, because once we pour the custard in, we don't want it to overcook and boil over and then burn. So we're just kind of folding. I'm on number three, number four, here I go. Using my thumb. This is a full finger workout. I'm not gonna lie to you. Stretching the dough, getting it nice and even. The butter is becoming very pliable with that dough and helping me just manipulate it to fit in the cup the best way. Okay, this is no joke. I'm not even gonna lie because we're fake it. I've been, I'm very honest. Anyone who has to do hundreds of these, there has to be a machine because I have been at this for around 30 minutes molding each cup. And I mean, I'm taking, this is love. This is like, this is a work of love right here. But this is not easy. You have to be very even pressure with your fingers so that you don't rip your dough. You have to run your fingers around to be smooth so that when you end up getting the form of the dough, one side got thicker than the other so the cook's consistent. So this takes time and we're only making a dozen people, only a dozen. I'm ready. All the shells have been made. I went around at the end with my two fingers and I kind of just pinched and made our lip for each one. And now, if you remember, our cusser ready to go. I'm just gonna make that a little bit of a skin because it was sitting there. I'm gonna give it a stir. And with the spout, we're gonna pour around two thirds of the way up. Why? It's gonna rise. It's gonna bake up and over and we don't want to come out of the cup. So, filling up our custard cups. I'm telling you right now, I'm like a little girl on Christmas. Crazy. I'm so excited right now. So, filling them all up. Perfect. I'm just topping off the remaining little bit. They are all full. They are all even. They are all freaking perfect. And now, the biggest surprise of it all 14 minutes. 14 minutes and it will be done. This process will be over. 550 degree oven. We're looking for a hot oven, not convection, just on bake. So we cook that pastry and cook that custard at the same time. Let's go. See you in 14 minutes. Are you ready? Cause I'm ready. And 14 minutes is up. And we're going into the oven. Woo! Let's look at him. All right, we're pulling them out. Oh baby. Well, I think because I didn't have it on convection, they didn't get too brown on top, but caliente. Okay, let's um, pop them on a rack to cool and let's see what comes out of this. All right, they're out. What I'm going to do is you're supposed to really eat these warm, but I want to get them out of the shell <sighs> and put them on a rack. To cool. Oh, I might lose my shit. I might lose my shit because they're coming out. Amazing! Amazing! Shut the front door! My dough. I don't even care if it was scrambled eggs inside right now. Do you know how hard I worked on this dough? Look at that. Look at that dough! From the non baker in me right now. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're gonna let them cool and then we'll taste them. I'm ready, are you? I just wanna say right now, regardless if they're good or bad, I'm really, really proud of myself. I have made a lot of different foods. I've challenged myself many times. This was not easy at all. I, I will not lie. Um, my 
dough. My dough that I doubted myself I could do is on freaking point. My bubba would be so proud of me. So I just wanna show you up close. Look at those layers. And it's all about the crunch. <laughs> oh my God. Do you see those layers? You see that? I might have to change my business. I'm going to pastries. Outstanding. Out freaking standing.